Hello and welcome back to the Sports Sermon. I'm Dylan Staggy. I'm Jason Gandhi. And we are back today to talk more about the NBA free agency. So, last time we left off, the first deal after that was Andre Roberson returning to the Oklahoma City Thunder on a three-year, $30 million deal. Uh, what do you think about it, Jason? I mean, I thought it was good value. Uh, $10 million a year for three years. He's a solid D, uh, defensive prospect that can really just take their defense to the next level when Paul George and Russell Westbrook aren't in. I think he can really help solidify as he comes out. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense for the Thunder now that they have uh, Paul George. They have kind of a more offense now. Uh, Roberson makes more sense and fits a little better um, with his defensive presence now. He doesn't have to be relied on as much for the offense. He can have more of his defensive role that he's better at and more comfortable at. And the Thunder looking good. Decent value. $10 million a year uh, for Andre Roberson. Yeah, the only problem is that, I mean, they obviously are still going to have to do it. I just mean, like, long term, if they decide, if Russell Westbrook and Paul George decide to leave, then you've got this guy locked up for $10 million for two more years when you're trying to rebuild. Not that I think it's a big deal, just something to be concerned about. I think it's not bad, though. I mean, like, if they did both leave, he'd be a trade piece. You'd trade him away and maybe get some value back. It's not like it's a bad contract or anything. Yeah, I mean, just $10 million. I don't know if it's exactly cheap for teams that, like, he because he's good on a championship-type team. I don't think he'd be good on a Kings or a Nets. Yeah, no. He's good on a contending team, and with a $10 million contract, it's pretty rare that that kind of team has that much money. Like, Cleveland's never going to have that much money. Golden State's not going to have that much money. Houston, like, teams like that were just, like, in order to get him to where he needs to be, I don't know if that $10 million is going to hurt him. We'll have to see about that for the Thunder. Um, but let's move on to uh, the Pacers, late, or not latest move anymore, but uh, they waived Monte Ellis shortly after that Roberson move um, because Monte Ellis kind of guy doesn't fit with the roster anymore as the Pacers are trying to move into a more competing or a tanking mode as they're not going to be competing anymore. Uh, don't need an older guy like Monte Ellis. They waived him and his $11 million dollars that he's owed this year is going to be spread out over the next five, about $2.2 million a year given to Monte Ellis. Uh, Jason, what did you think about that one? Um, I think it actually made sense for both sides. So, for the Pacers, I think you can talk more than I can because I didn't really watch Pacers that much. He struggled. He came in averaging just under 19 points a game, really never averaging less than 18 points in his career, and then comes Indiana, averages 14, and then this year, 9. So, I think he was disappointed to what the Pacers were expecting. But on the flip side, if I'm Monte Ellis, this is a good spot for me to be in. Because when I went to Dallas, I averaged 19 points a game. When I was at Golden State, I averaged 20 points. Now I was at Milwaukee, I averaged 19 points. So really, somebody in Indiana and him didn't rub the right way. So now he gets a chance to go to a new team. The Lakers are rumored interested. And there's one other team, I forget who, is a decent young team that he can come in, take up minutes, and I think it's good for both sides, really. Yeah, I agree. I think both sides kind of needed this. He definitely wasn't working out for the Pacers and really just needed to move on and start rebuilding. I don't like Monte Ellis as part of the Pacers' future. Um, obviously, I think they would have traded him if they could, but uh, I don't think anyone's really wanted Monte Ellis on a $11 million contract next year. The only thing I don't like about this, though, for the Pacers is that I think they should have just paid his all, all of his $11 million this year, uh, just dealt with it, their rebuilding team anyway, instead of spreading it over the next five years. Now they have to deal with it for the next five when guys like Miles Turner uh, are going to have to get paid. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think it made sense. It's not going to be expensive. You spread it out. You can still sign guys like Bojan Bogdanovic. They got Darren Collison, those type guys you can sign but, this why, year. I, I don't understand those moves a ton, though, for the Pacers. Better in leadership to mentor these guys. Like, Bojan can play minutes of the three because you don't have a three besides GR3. And then to mentor Joe Young, you got Darren Collison. I liked every move the Pacers have made this offseason because they had to get a Paul George, and now they're just in the rebuild, and there's not much they can do. Only trade I didn't like Jenny Sabonis and Oladipo, but, I mean, that's a different story. 
All right, let's move on to the Mavericks now. Dirk Nowitzki taking another uh, pay cut, two years, uh, or a one-in-one deal. He gets a player option for the second year, um, but only $5 million a year over these next two. Um, Good value for the Mavericks. What does it do for both sides? What do you think, Jason? I mean, I thought it was fine. I think it was necessary. Like, you're not going to let Dirk leave by any chance, by any means. It was a good, I don't know what the right word is. It was just a solid contract. Both guys, both sides got what they wanted out of it. Mavericks to honor Dirk's legacy. Dirk gets to keep playing in the NBA. So really, I liked it. I don't know. There's not much else to say because it's kind of like a boring subject. It's not like he's moving anywhere. Like, it's just he's coming back. Yeah, I mean, I think the Mavericks could have paid him a little bit more, though, after all the pay cuts he's taken uh, throughout his career. It's not like they're going to compete next year anyway. Um, just give him a one-year big bigger deal, in my opinion. But um, good value for the Mavericks still. He's As long as he wants to be there and he's willing to take these contracts, so you might as well keep doing it. I mean, he did not take a pay cut last year. He had $25 million last year. I mean, but when he signed that contract, though, and... I mean, he's earned, besides his rookie deal, he's only taken single-digit millions three times. Yeah, but... He's taken three pay cuts, including this one. Yeah, that's a lot. But, I mean, $25 million last year, and then 22 in 2013, 20, 19, 17, 19, 18, 16, 15, 13, 12, 11. Like, there's not going to be pay cuts... I don't know. I thought. I mean, he could. If anything, I would have, told, I would have tried to get him for less. I mean, he's obviously going to come back. So you can get him for, like, the minimum. No, he's not going to sign for the minimum. That would just be a waste of his team time, I would think. I don't know. I mean, last year when he signed the 1 plus 1 for $25 million, it was a two year $50 million deal. And obviously, Dirk wasn't going to accept it. But, like, I don't know. It just made sense for me. Like, I, I don't think that it was a big deal that he didn't take a pay cut. All right, let's move on to a uh, point guard um, that played overseas, uh, was voted as the guy, the best guy to not be in the NBA uh, besides uh, rookies and upcoming prospects. Milos Teodosic going to the Los Angeles Clippers on a one-year deal worth uh, about $6.5 million, uh, with a player option for the second and the same dollar amount. Does this make sense, Jason? For him, yes. For the Clippers, not really. I mean, what are the Clippers getting out of this? Because if he's really good, you lose him. And he was really bad, now you're stuck with him. Like, I don't know. I didn't think it made sense for the Clippers. But, <coughs> sorry. For Teodosic, is that how you say it? Teodosic. Te- Teodosic. Uh, I like it. You get to come overseas. And, I mean, he's pretty highly touted. But at the same time, I would take that with a grain of salt. Lots of... European guys that can pass the ball get highly touted, and some pan out, some don't. Don't get me wrong, I think he could. But I think he's he's fun to watch. He's similar to Marcelo Huertas, in my opinion. Hopefully he's better for the Clippers. But it's only $69 million. I, th- I guess it was worth the risk for the Clippers just to have him for a year. But it doesn't really give him much value, because either way, you're, like, you're not going to be happy either way. You're going to be mad he's gone, you're going to be... Maddie's here. Yeah, I mean, he could opt out and then come back for more money if he does play well. But, yeah, I would have liked another year locked up. I would for, have two plus one at least, yeah. Yeah. It was rumored like a three-year, $27 million deal before like that. this came out, yeah. I mean, but then you're stuck with him for two more years on a $9 million contract when you have to re-sign guys like DeAndre Jordan next summer. Maybe so you don't re-sign DeAndre Jordan. Why don't you not re-sign DeAndre Jordan? Trade him? The Clippers need to hit the rebuild button. Get young guys. No. I mean, they're just not going to let DeAndre Jordan go. I don't think they're going to trade him either. All right. I'm sure when Blake signed his contract, they promised to do everything they can to keep DeAndre around because um, those guys are best friends, and Blake was a huge part in bringing DeAndre back when he Almost left. Um, let's move back to the Eastern Conference. Um, Kelly Olynyk signed a four-year, $50 million deal uh, with the Miami Heat. Jason, did you like that move? I'm not that big of a fan of um, Kelly Olynyk. I don't know. I just don't think he's that good. He got hot in the playoffs, whatever. I mean, he's averaged over 10 points a game two out of the four years he's been in the league. But rebounds, he's never averaged over five. So, like... 
a 10 and 5 guy. I don't know if he's worth that much money. I'm not a big fan, but at the same time, I get it for the Heat, except for I don't, because I already have bigs. That's the only thing is, like, save that money and get a guard. Like, Drogic's not in your future. He's already 30. Get a point guard. Get a shooting guard. Get somebody else. You've already got Adebayo, Whiteside, James Johnson. The guys didn't think Olenek was necessary. I think, I don't know. I mean, I mean, look at he's still look how much he's getting paid, though. Like, if it was cheaper, yeah, okay, you suck it up. He's getting paid the same amount as Joe Ingles, Patty Mills, Zach Randolph. All three of those guys are playing valuable quality minutes. And Kelly Olenek isn't? You don't need him to. He shouldn't come off the bench. Yeah. But, like, you don't need him to. You've got James Johnson, who you paid $15 million a year. You've got Bam Adebayo, who you're obviously going to want minutes. You've got Whiteside, who's obviously going to take up minutes. Like, you got Josh McRoberts. Like, I just, they traded Josh McRoberts. Okay, but either way, like... You just don't, there's not a need. So, like, save that money and throw it at Ben McLemore for all I care. Like, throw it at a younger guard if you're going to do that. Or Dion, yeah, they got waiters back, never mind. Someone like Tim Hardaway, obviously not going to beat $71 million, But, like, throw that money at a guard where they, that's actually a need. Like, who's their shooting guard besides waiters? Nobody. Like, Josh Richardson. So Tyler like, Johnson? I don't know. I would just focus on point guards and guard help instead of... I mean, of they have Tyler Johnson, Drogic, and... Do you think Dion Tyler Johnson's Raiders. like the future if he's not good? He's pretty good. I mean, he's not terrible. He, I, he's I think they need guards before they need bigs. They need guards before they need bigs. I don't know. I I like the move for Kelly Olenek. I think it made sense. Although, I think a two or three year deal uh, would have been better for the Heat at least. Uh Kelly, I mean, you're taking fifty million dollars if someone gives it to you. Uh, I'm just back up for the Celtics last year. Had a huge game seven against the Wizards, but other than that, I'm not I paying mean, a guy twelve point five million dollars a year to average ten and five in his best year yet. I'm just not. I mean, it's not like he had a huge role with the Celtics, though. Well, it's not like when he had a huge role, he played that well. I mean, he had a big role in his early years before Isaiah Thomas was kind of good. Yeah, but I mean. Those, I just he was still young then, though. He's 26. Well, I mean, I'm talking about his early years when he did get a bigger role. That's fine. I'm just saying I didn't like it personally, but I can see it. I think a two- or three-year deal would have made more sense, but um, it's not terrible. Let's move on back to the Western Conference and back to uh, contenders. Uh, Rudy Gay signed a two-year, $17 million deal. Uh, with the Spurs, I think that second year is a player option uh, for Rudy Gay. He decides not to take the money and decides to compete after um, not really doing much in the playoffs throughout his career. Uh, do you like the move, Jason? I loved it. Both sides are happy. You're only paying him 8.6. I think, I mean, Cristiano Felicia is making 8, and Darren Collison's making 10. Rudy Gay is much better than both those guys. I love it. For the Spurs, and I love it for Gay. Now he gets to actually have a chance to be successful in the playoffs. Yeah, I think you, if you're Rudy Gay, you are taking a bet on yourself uh, to kind of play better this year and show you can be a contributor on a um, contending team, uh, win some games in the playoffs, and uh, next year you have more options to take the money or uh, go back to the Spurs and try and go at it again with another championship. Um, we'll have to see what he does with that, but definitely the dollar value makes sense. Uh, if he wasn't getting any other big money offers that locked him up for long term, uh, definitely makes sense to go to the Spurs and uh, compete. Mm-hmm. Let's stay in the Western Conference, though. Vince Carter, a 40-year-old wing, goes to the Sacramento Kings on a one-year, $8 million deal. Pretty expensive for Vince. What did you think, Jason? Perfect fit. Get to mentor Justin Jackson, mentor some other guys, and come in and play lots of minutes. I don't think he'll play lots of minutes at 40 years old. but Same the, money play with the Grizzlies. No, I think less with the... I mean, the Kings have guys like Buddy Heald that are going to play. Like Vince Carter was the Grizzlies' best wing last year. He's going to be starting three. He's not going to start Jackson over Carter. I, I think the starting final will be Fox, healed him, LeBrissier, and old, Kelly Stein. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're not trying to win this year. You're mentor him. So they why don't... wouldn't you start the young guys then? Because if you're not trying to win. Jackson's not ready to play yet. Jackson needs to develop. He's going to play. He could be their seventh or eighth man. I'm just saying, I think 
Car- or Card will be the sixth or seventh or eighth man. Both guys are going to play significant minutes. Yeah, I like the move for the Kings. Obviously, Vince Carter's not worth eight million in terms of the value he's going to give on the basketball court. But the mentoring side and all, all that with the young guys, I like what the Kings did, bringing in three guys in George Hill, Zach Randolph, and Vince Carter that are going to help the young guys. Um, and they don't have their first round pick next year, so um, should be trying to get a little better at least. You don't have to worry about not having a high draft pick next year. These moves are making sense for the Kings, and I like what they're doing. Let's move on to one of the biggest offers and one of the most controversial. Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, was given four years and a $71 million contract by the Knicks, a team that traded him away a couple of years ago. Um, Jason, did you like the move? I did. I liked it fit-wise. I didn't like it money-wise. I thought, I mean, we talked about it, I think, in the Knicks preview that we thought Tim Hardaway Jr. would be a good fit to come back. Like, I think both of us agree it was a good fit. It's the money. Like, why? Like, like they already have Noah locked yeah. up. They already have Courtney Lee locked up. They're just going to have no cap room in two to three yeah. years when they need to sign like, big free I agents. Even, I would not have mind four years, $50 million. I wouldn't mind that at all. Like what they gave James Johnson or Kelly Olenek, like that type yeah, of contract. Yeah, apparently that's what... I mean, you do have to get over the Hawks because they're going to match them. Let the Hawks that match range. him then. I mean, then you trade for him. Like, you're telling me the Hawks are going to keep Tim Hardaway Jr. when they're trying to rebuild? I mean, he's a young guy that had his best year last year. I don't I, think the Hawks were apparently willing to offer him four years, forty-eight million. So I think a fifty million dollars. Exactly, something that Johnson. I would have matched whatever Johnson and Olenek got. I forget what the exact numbers are. Fifty for Olenek. I think it's like sixty or something. Just give him in that twelve to fifteen million dollar range, and yeah, you know, like even a three-year, forty-five million dollar deal would have made sense for. I think it would have. Do I nothing think for so. Hardaway, he would have wanted four. I think like, usually a big issue is a three to four year, third or fourth year. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. But obviously, we can both agree that... Tim the Hardaway, fit was nice, not the money. Yeah, I think he'll contribute on the Knicks, but definitely not enough to make up for that uh, $18 million a year contract. Um, but let's move on to a trade. Avery Bradley and a second-round pick going from the Celtics to the Pistons, and the Celtics get Marcus Morris back. What do you think about that uh, for the Celtics, Jason? Um, I thought it made sense. Um, this is how I looked at it. I think I might have said this on our podcast. If not, I was talking to some, some friends about it. I love Avery Bradley. I don't care about his offense. I don't care about his offense at all. Defensively, he fit beautifully with the Celtics. They needed him. I would have gotten rid of Smart and taken less for him. Marcus Morris is not a good fit because they gives him another win. I just am not sure Bradley's the guy to give up. I think you'd cut your losses on Smart and say, okay, we're not going to get equal value. Like what they did with Bradley, I would have done with Smart, because you need that defense. Bradley was low-key a top-five best perimeter defender in the league last year. Like, don't care about all defensive votes, all that crap. Bradley was a phenomenal defender, and with Isaiah Thomas being such a sieve at the point guard spot, you needed Bradley. But at the same time, they had to get space, because if not, you're not getting Gordon Hayward. So I get it from their spot. I just would have rather preferred Smart over Bradley. Yeah, I think I really agree, because... Or, hold up. Or if you're going to get Morris back, you're going to Crowder. Now you have so many wings. You have four wings now. Yeah, I don't think the Celtics are done, though. I think they'll... Really? I, you can't have four guys like that. You really don't think they're done? Brown, Tatum, Hayward, Jack, no, Crowder have four. So, you think they're going to get rid of Crowder, too? That is not sense to me, then. I think that's stupid. I, I think this trade goes down stupid, then. And they're going to go to Crowder, too. They don't need to get rid of both of them. Yeah, but I I agree with you in saying that they should get rid of Smart. They have a guy that they apparently love, and Terry Rozier yeah, wouldn't, give, wouldn't give him up for Paul George. Uh, make him the backup point guard and keep Avery Bradley at the two. Yeah. Twos that are as versatile as Avery Bradley are hard to come by in uh, free agency. You can sign a backup point guard for a minimum contract oh, and easy, yeah. have him produce but or T dosage for six and a half million. Like. Yeah, something like that. Uh but I think Avery Bradley a lot more value. I love Bradley even though even though they probably wouldn't be able to sign him back next year, it's still I think better than Smart who they probably wouldn't either. Let's move on to uh Tyreek Evans signed a one-year, $3 million deal uh, with the Grizzlies. 
Does it make any difference for the Grizzlies, Jason? I mean, the way I look at it is, it's a cheaper Vince Carter. They're going to do the same thing Vince Carter did for Memphis. I didn't. It wasn't really that big of a deal to me. Yeah, a cheap deal, though, I thought. Tiger yeah, Evans could have... Steal. Tyreek Evans could have made a lot more money. I think there are a few steals because of how much money was spent last season. Or, yeah, last offseason. Even early in this free agency, there was a lot of money spent and um, and some bad deals like Hardaway and stuff. Te- yeah. Team just throwing away their cap space a little bit. I mean, we're going to get to it later, but like a steal in Alan Williams for just over $5 million a year, like that's so yeah. nice. Like there's Right now is where the value is because... These guys, teams are out of money, and I think next year is going to be a lot of value, too, because there's not many teams that have much spending money. Yeah. Um, I like the deal for Evans. I think he comes in and uh, gives the Grizzlies some more wing production, something that they were definitely lacking last year, as Chandler Parsons was an absolute bust from free agency. Let's move back to the Pacers. We talked about earlier with the Monte Ellis move, brought in a new guy in Bojan Bogdanovic, a two-year, $21 million deal. The second year is only guaranteed for, I think, $1.5 million, though. Uh, Jason, does this make sense for the Pacers? I like it. It fills a three, something that you can give uh, GR3 some mentor and some leadership. Bill Young's kind of bounced around. Uh, I liked it. Cheap contract, like oh, $10.5 million, I think you said. I mean, it's only a two-year deal, so yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I think it makes sense for the Pacers. Not somebody that's going to put them over the top and kind of drag them to a ton of wins, something that the Pacers, I don't, I don't think they should be uh, looking for, but somebody that can uh, split minutes with Glenn Robinson III, help mentor him, and not just put him out there for 30-something minutes a game and let him figure it out himself. I think it makes sense for the Pacers. But Jamal Crawford was bought out by the Hawks, and uh, then went and signed a two-year, $9 million deal with the Timberwolves. Did you like that move for the Timberwolves, Jason? I did. Veteran, three-point shooting. I liked it. Yeah, something that the Timberwolves really need. Some three-point shooting. Jamal Crawford, former sixth man of the year, uh, can come off the bench and give them some uh, much-needed shooting. Um, Let's go back to another trade, though. Damari Carroll along with a first and second round pick, are going to the Brooklyn Nets for Justin Hamilton. Did you like that move, Jason? For which team? Uh, Let's start with the Raptors. I do. Clears cap. I didn't really think. I mean, I wouldn't get the first round for him, but it sounds like he had to. Obviously, they wouldn't do it for nothing. I thought it was fine. You get the cap space. You obviously believe in OG, but they're pretty slim at the three spot now. Yeah, I think they can still maybe sign one uh, cheap in free agency uh, later because, I mean, we're, we talked about some of the good deals are really happening right now. I think they can uh, maybe steal one uh, away later in free agency to kind of help fill what Damari Carroll did, but obviously he was way underproducing for that $15 million a year uh, contract. Had to give up a first and second to get rid of him, but it's what you have to do if you're the Raptors. Obviously, that signing didn't work out, and now you have to get rid of him. The only thing that really I struck out to me, like, for, like after the initial reaction was, if that's how much it costs to get rid of Damari Carroll, I'm worried about what that's going to do for Lou Day and the Lakers. Like, well, actually, there was rumor, okay, we can probably get him off for him and, like, Clarkson. Like, okay, no big. But, like, I'm worried. I mean, I don't know what team has that cap space, though, now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just... That's scary now as like a Laker fan thing, and it's going to be hard to load off the scary to Lou all day now if it's going to take that much to get Amari Carroll on a cheaper contract. All right, but let's talk about the replacement for the Raptors now and Damari Carroll. They signed C.J. Miles in a sign-and-trade. He uh, signed back with the Pacers, and in return, the Raptors gave the Pacers Corey Joseph. Um, did you like that deal for the Pacers, Jason? I did. I thought C.J. Miles, good player, wasn't working out, doesn't fit the youth movement. Corey Joseph, a young point guard, had some potential in San Antonio, and now he can kind of run the show in Indiana. For the Raptors, I love C.J. Miles. I want him to come to the Lakers. He can pop a three ball out of his mind. I like C.J. Miles. Yeah, a good move. Uh, I think he's going to give at least the same production as Damari Carroll did on a much cheaper contract. The Raptors unloaded a couple of uh, expensive contracts in uh, Joseph and Damari Carroll. 
and for the Pacers, getting another young point guard to uh, come in behind Darren Collison and uh, learn some stuff and hopefully be a solid starter in the next few years for the Pacers. Let's move on to the last deal that's been made recently. Uh, Allen Williams uh, going back to the Suns on a three-year, $17 million contract. Uh, Jason, does this make sense for Allen Williams? Um, Allen probably could have gotten more. I love it for the Suns. Allen Williams is debatably their second-best player last year in the second half of the season. I thought he played very well for the Suns, showed some potential, and now the Suns get a steal. Yeah, a really good forward uh, for the Suns, and still young, still developing, and like Jason said, one of the best players, especially in the second half of the season for the Suns. If I'm Allen Williams, though, I would have done, like if he could only get this $5 million, I would have been on myself and done a one- or two-year deal. But three years now, this $5 million, a little that over $5 million. That's valuable if the cap keeps going up. Yeah. That's a trade piece that they could maybe trade away too. Get some if really contenders, yeah. Yeah, if they, if the Suns want some really good value for him uh, later in the contract, they could do him and Chandler even trade his contract and Tyson Chandler to get rid of that salary. I don't think Tyson Chandler's a huge concern. It's it's not like when it was right away when they signed him and it was like seventy four. The cap is only two years. Two I mean, years, two years left. I think twelve. He's twelve or thirteen million. I don't think that's a huge deal for the Suns, especially they're not gonna. They don't have anybody to really. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking next year. Like once they might be in contention, I think could make sense. Uh, I think maybe it is an expiring contract. I don't think it'll be that hard to deal next year if the Suns really want to. Um, but I think that's all we got for free agent moves right now. Yeah, so we're kind of hitting a lull because NBA is slowing down. Uh, we're going to start getting into college football and fantasy football, but really hit us up in the comment section on what you guys want to see. We're open to anything. If you want to hear about water polo, we'll talk about water polo. Like, really, whatever you want to know, as long as you guys are really interested, like, whatever wins of most votes, we're going to do, because it's all about what you guys want to hear, so let us know. Yeah, thank you guys for listening, and if you enjoyed, uh, this NBA Free Agency podcast and want to hear more, uh, about the NBA, hit that like button, and the subscribe button to see all of our uh, new videos. Uh, and also make sure to follow us on Twitter. The link is in the description. Um, so thank you guys for listening. We will see you tomorrow.